Hello everyone. I guess we're gonna let a few more people trickle in, but I'm Drew Pallas with the Security Title Guarantee Corporation Baltimore. Thanks for joining us on our monthly webinar. I'm really excited to have our guest today, Dave Conway. He is the CEO of the digital marketing agency, Simplex 360. He has graciously taken a break from his uh, voiceover acting for Old Spice commercials. And uh, he's been working with us since what, 2018 with our, our website, digital marketing. Yeah, around there, almost seven years. Nice. Yeah, uh, Dave has been uh, working with with me on some specific projects and uh, data specific things with our digital marketing. I uh, really wanted to take the opportunity to get him in and share his expertise with all of you. He's worked in the title insurance industry for almost 10 years now, and I don't want to do him an injustice by saying that he's been behind the scenes. Uh, but he's worked with a lot of title companies and I'll let you speak for yourself, Dave. Uh, what has been your, your background in digital marketing? What's been your background specific to digital marketing and title insurance? Yeah, I mean, we started as a tech company back in 2014 and got kind of roped into a title project. And that was our first experience with the title industry. So as you, as you can imagine, it was like overwhelm of information. It's a really specific industry. There's lots of nuances. So the first thing we did, uh, we joined Notary Loop. Uh, a lot of you guys probably know that name. Um, they built one of the first platforms that allowed you know title companies to connect with notaries all over the United States. Uh, so I learned a lot about title and how things work, especially on the notary side of you know all the closing, how, how the documents uh, are are, are uh, taken care of, and things like that. And then we kind of got out of that. We formed a partnership with Bo Digital. It's another name probably a lot of you have heard of and know. Uh, we worked with Wayne Stanley. He has a fantastic team over there at Bo, and we we did a lot of back end fulfillment for them. We partnered with them on everything from you know like SEO audits and. Uh, new website builds for their customers. And together, uh, our team and Bo's team released just a ton of uh, websites for different title companies throughout the nation. And so we got to touch pretty much all the different areas across the United States. And each one is kind of unique. Um, we've, we've worked with a lot of land title associations um, over the last, you know, eight to nine years. So it's, it's been fun. We, we've learned a ton. Uh, and recently, you know, going out kind of on our own there, making our own connections in the industry, we've been developing software. Um, we, we've built websites for some of the biggest title uh, company groups in the nation. Um, and so I feel like at this point, you know, we're, we're pretty well entrenched in the industry. We, we know what it takes to, to get clients there, especially digitally online. You know, we, we've kind of cracked the code on title company websites and what needs to be in place to attract uh, realtors and lender uh, relationship, as well as the, you know, for sale by owner piece that everyone's starting to go after. And we've tested a lot of different strategies when it comes to what works for, you know, because title is all about relationships, right? It's not really just transactional online, but we've figured out how to leverage the internet as a starting point for those relationships. And then we help our clients attract those people up front uh, with things like, you know, webinars, uh, courses, uh, CEs for their realtors. Uh, and then using their website and their digital presence as the hub to create all of those relationships in their communities to get more, you know, more agents sending them deals. So it's been a fun ride, man. And I guess now almost about 10 years later, um, yeah, it's been, it's been going really well. And I appreciate you having me on here today. It's, uh, it'll be Thanks. fun to chat about some of this stuff. Yeah, we're going to keep this uh, a bit more free form. If anyone that has any questions as we're covering these topics, uh, there is, a question submission tab and a chat tab. I'll be monitoring both of those as we go along. And anything that you want answered in real time, we'll we'll take a pause and, and answer any questions, look anything up as we go along. Can we test and chat? If you guys chat. are there and can hear us, can you guys say hello? Just so we know that it's working and we can make sure that we can see your messages. If you heard me there, just just give me a give me a quick hi in the chat. Oh, I see a couple of hands are raised. Beautiful. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Well, that way, you know, this is going to be, like Drew said, a, a very uh, informal thing. It's going to be a conversation. We're going to drop a lot of knowledge uh, and explain kind of how this whole thing works from start to finish. Uh, but if you guys have any questions at all, we'll be kind of free to go down those tangents and to answer any questions that you guys have related to, you know, to what we're talking about. So feel free to, to pop in questions and we'll definitely get to them. Um, especially at the end of the session, if you guys hang around, uh, Drew and I will stay on for a little bit as well. And if you guys want us to pull up some of your websites or some of your competitors live and kind of take a peek at what they're doing behind the curtain and get some actionable advice, we'd be happy to provide that as well. For sure. 
So we have some pretty clear old school sentiment in the industry. And then you have a lot of people that are being progressive with the technology. And there might be some hangups. And, you know, in your almost 10 years of working with title insurance people, what are the, is, is the biggest hang up that none of this matters and none of this works and it's all just, uh, I'm supposed to do it because, you know, it's the new thing and relationships are the only thing that matters. And, you know, what is that the big hang yeah. up? I've heard that a lot uh, because we go into a lot of different industries. And the first thing that I do is kind of an audit. I'll, I'll show what that looks like here in a bit, but I'm able to see when we pull up a specific city, how many people are searching in that area for this service. So what I hear a lot is that, well, our business doesn't come from digital. It doesn't come from online leads. My website is just a brochure that when people want to learn more about me or find a way to contact me, they go there. But my website isn't really going to close new deals and new relationships because title is all people to people. It's all about the events. It's all about the networking. No one is searching for a title company online. And I think I've heard those words a lot, especially over the years. And I think uh, clients of mine are always surprised when we actually look at the data and we pull up and we can see how many people are searching in a specific city and, and really what they're looking for. And people are surprised that in, in many cities across the country, there are thousands of people that are typing in title company near me. How much does a closing cost? You know, closing company near me. What is title insurance? And, and you know, the people that are searching those most likely don't have a relationship already. Now, sure, some of your competitors might be, you know, searching locally to find and see what their competitors are doing. But a good amount of those people that are searching are searching because they need a solution, whatever that is. They've, they've had an issue with their current title company or they're, you know, like a private buyer, private seller looking to, to connect with a title company to take care of their deal or they're a newer agent or a lender that's looking for a relationship for whatever reason. The point is, is that there are people out there searching. Now, sure, in some small rural areas, maybe there isn't any traffic. But the point that I really want to drive home here is that you don't have to shoot in the dark. You don't have to guess. There are actual tangible ways to figure out if people are searching in your area and what they're searching for so that you can then capture that start ranking on Google for it, and then give those people the content that they're looking for and guide them through that customer journey into becoming a client of yours. And so we've seen this over and over again where we implement a new website in a new city, we rank it on Google Maps and at the top of Google, and they're like, man, we're getting a ton of inquiries and signups for our, you know, like our continued education classes that we've never spoken with these people, but they looked it up online, they found our courses, they went to our website, they became a lead, and now they're a partner. Uh, so yeah, and, and a long-winded way of answering your question there, Drew, yes, I hear that a lot. And so I think that's one of the first things that we could really dig into together here. And just because there isn't a ton of volume doesn't necessarily uh, equate to it being a bad thing. One of, the, one of the points that you made in our lead-up conversations to this is in a niche industry, the buyer intent is probably a lot higher than somebody that's going to go browse a, a consumer product, right? Yeah, and the thing with that is like, I'll, I'll compare it to advertising in other spaces, right? When you put something out there on LinkedIn or social media, you're hoping that the person that sees it is in the headspace and needs what you're talking about, right? So when we're scrolling through Facebook, what are we looking at? We're looking at family photos, we're looking at events, and we might see some, you know, an article that a title company put out that I'm subscribed to, but I'm not in the headspace to receive that information. So it's kind of hit or miss on that front. Same thing with posting on LinkedIn, right? It's a numbers game. You're hoping that the person that comes across the feed needs that service, or at least that you can build a relationship with them. The great thing about Google search is that they are all people that are looking for a solution today. That person has, has gone to Google. They've literally typed in title company near me or title company in this city. They have a need, they have a reason, they have an immediate pain or a problem that they need a title company's help to address. So those are the hottest leads that we can get on the internet. Uh, through any other form of marketing are people that are actively searching today for a problem because their their buying intent, their purchase intent is so much higher than where most title companies are hitting these people on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on social media. And so when we focus so much on social media and dominating that, but we don't spend any time on capturing literally the lowest hanging fruit, which are the people that are searching right now for, for you know a solution for a title company to partner with for whatever reason, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And so that's kind of what I want to drive home here is the idea that hey, these, these people that are searching, capturing this traffic, even if there's not a ton of it, they have a much higher likelihood of becoming a client or a lead that you can communicate with than probably most of your other forms of advertising or marketing that you're doing. 
Um, and it's all about that intent. People aren't searching unless they have a specific need to search. Does that make sense, Drew? Yeah. Well, do you think it's time to pop open a sample keyword search and, and see what we can find? Yeah, let's do that. I think that'll be really valuable here. And I'm also, I don't want to get too technical, but guys that are on here, I really, I really do want to give you like something actionable that you can go and do. So I'm going to show you some of the tools that we use. And this is something that you, you know, want to pass off to your marketing team, uh, but they're not that difficult to use. And, and I'll show you that here if I can get my screen shared. All right. Do I have the right screen up? Are you able to see the Google ad screen here, Drew? It just popped up. Yeah. All right, beautiful. So guys, if you have ever run a Google Ads campaign, it means you have a Google Ads account. And with that, they give you a ton of free tools that we can use to figure out if people are searching in your local area. So it's called Keyword Planner. When you go into a Google Ads account, which is free, you click Tools, Keyword Planner, and it'll take you right into here where you can discover new keywords and get search volume and forecast. So this is straight from the horse's mouth. This is Google telling us what people in specific areas are searching for. So we can click Discover New Keywords and we can start typing in ideas, right? Like title company near me, just things that you think people might be searching for. Um, and I don't know, escrow services, Drew, throw some out. You got anything else that we might want to toss in here? What is title insurance? What would people in a local area be typing in when they're looking? Well, I mean, on the heels of the State of the Union, why don't we uh, do uh, lender's title insurance? Lender's title insurance. Okay, now we'll just start there. And if we want to, you can throw in your, uh, your URL here as well, and Google will attempt to filter some of those out. For now, I'm just going to leave it open and hit get results just with those four keywords. So what this does right now, I have it opened up. You see, we can set the location to United States and I can sort by average monthly searches. Now, Google's just trying to give me ideas here. Not all of these are going to be relevant, but the point is that I want to go through these and see which one are or which ones are important to me. So I'll go through here and I'll start checking things off. You know, what is going to be a good lead? Someone searching for escrow that doesn't show a lot of buyer's intent, uh, but we can see that a lot of people are bidding on it. And that's the other thing I want to point out here, guys, is that while this tool is for Google ads, it shows us what people are typing in online. So we don't have to capture them with a Google ad. We can do you know, SEO, you can optimize your website for these keywords. Basically the point of this is to figure out what people in your cities are searching for and to be able to tailor your content to what they're looking for. This will tell you exactly what pages you need to create, what blog articles you need to write, what keywords you need to use on your homepage and on your different service pages. And this is how we build a website that fits the questions that people are asking on Google. And because we're matching what Google's customers are asking for, Google is more likely to put us in front of those customers. Remember, Google's number one job is to answer the question of their searcher. So if, if we can figure out what questions and keywords those people are asking and typing in, and we match our website and our content to those, those pieces, you see how we create that value and we become the number one source locally for Google in that area. So I'll type these in and, and you see there's a bunch of them in here, house title company near me, property title company near me, uh, and then we can throw in our city. So, you know, let's hit a random city. What's a good title city, Drew? Uh, give me a big one. Why don't we do New York? Uh, you wanna do New York? New York. New York, New York. Okay, so you hit the city here, guys, and we hit save. And it's gonna change the volumes here and literally show us, we can sort by average monthly searches and it will show us what keywords people are typing in in that area. Now you see, I didn't really do a very exhaustive list. I have one saved here that I did before this call just to kind of show you, these were the best keywords in that area. Um, and let's look up, let's do New York. And Dave, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself too much here, but you before agree? anyone gets too psyched out that if you're not gonna spend a whole bunch of money on Google ads, you're gonna get buried, it's not the case. Google nah. put out a big update in October uh, with all of the AI, with all the AI tools, pe people were churning out articles and mm -hmm. Google needed to preserve its own service because if it's going to keep putting out uh, fluff AI articles, then it's not going to be very valuable. So Google had to reel it back in and prioritize helpful, unique content. So if anyone sure. on this call wanted to get started with this keyword research and in turn uh, create blog content or create any other content uh, targeting these keywords, you're not far behind. Google is going to promote your content if it is uh, you know, genuine content and oh, yeah. answering, the, answering the search question. 
So, so you're talking to... about the the helpful content up, update there. You know, SEO has been changing forever. What what Google looks at to rank someone online has been consistently changing over and over. Just last week, we had a huge Google update come out that we saw spammy AI content. You guys know what I'm talking about. People that just found GPT and they go out there and they start, okay, GPT, give me 47 articles on title insurance, right? And then they just copy and paste what it puts out and they put it on their website and it ranked initially. And so that's been a strategy for like the last year that people have been cranking out these a ridiculous amount of AI content. And this earlier this week, we just saw those articles and those sites get delisted and they plummeted in search. And that's because Google knows that that content is regurgitated and it's not actually helpful. It's not authoritative. It doesn't bring anything new and therefore it got buried. So if you have been creating good content this whole time, answering users' questions, writing it as a human, as an expert in the industry, you are set up for success. You're well ahead of the game. Most of what we're gonna talk about here is about how to take these keywords and get them into the right type of content on your website to start getting visitors and closing deals with it. So that's yeah. a great point. And so you yeah. see here, guys, I'm gonna blow this up. Look at New York, title company near me, there's a there's 100 to 1,000 different people searching for that keyword uh, every single month. And there are people bidding on those as well. Now guys, your competitors in these areas would not be spending money on you know paying two to $8 per click for every single click they're getting, unless there, there were good leads in there. So whenever I look up a keyword list in a specific city and I see that there is consistent bidding going on for those keywords, they're paying that for every single click that they get. And remember only 5% of clicks actually turn into a closed deal in, in the title industry. 5% is about the average of what we see for a conversion rate. Uh, so you know, I'm terrible at math, but if, if you do the math there, you can figure out out of 100 clicks how much they're spending to get one good lead. And so if people are doing that consistently, that tells me that no matter how small the search volume here is, there are good paying clients in there to close because they wouldn't be buying those ads consistently if it wasn't converting into dollars for them. Makes sense. Um, and now looking at a couple of these here, um, I did pull some other some other cities. Uh, just looking, you know, in New York, it was 1K to 10K for title company near me. Um, let's see, for Philadelphia, uh, they had six keywords that were above a thousand searches a month. Title company near me, home title company near me, property title company near me, house title company near me, title company near me. Then there's some some smaller searches around 400 a month in Philly for title agent search company near me. So the point here is that in every single city that we have looked at, there is a good search volume there to capture. And depending on where you are, you can run this search. I won't spend too much more time here. You guys can come in here, get the big list of keywords that you believe people are searching for. Use Google's little keyword ideas here to go through and search for some suggestions and add those to your list. That's gonna allow you to build a big list. Now, of course, guys, if you don't wanna sit here and do this, you're not a big marketing person, you can buy keyword research from any agency. We do it, you can hire guys on Fiverr and Upwork to do it. Keyword research isn't necessarily difficult. And with just a little bit of an investment, you can get a huge keyword list of everything that people are typing in in your area. For an advanced tip, um, if your marketing teams have access to any cool data tools like Ahrefs, or you know, I think there's uh, there's some others out there that are very popular as well uh, for SEO data, but you could type in a competitor's, you know, let's do eSecurity. You could type in a competitor's uh, website here and search it and get a ton of information. And so we actually pull this before we start any marketing campaign for a client. My team goes, we do keyword research, and then we look at all the competitors and we figure out, okay, why are these competitors ranking? Why are they getting clients in that local area? Why is our client not? And so we can we can see a clear gap there. You know, hey client, you're not ranking for these 10 keywords. These are the competitors that are ranking. And here's why they're ranking ahead of you. Here's an actionable list of things that you can do today to beat them. And that's kind of, I have a bone to pick with a lot of digital marketing companies that sell cookie cutter services. And this is why, especially with title, every market is different. The keyword lists that you're targeting are different. The competitors in each area have different strategies, different ways that they've come to the top. So the only way to really approach this is with a custom strategy. And, and if I was gonna, you know, e-security title, Drew, if I was gonna break you guys down and do a quick competitor analysis, I can see how much you've invested into backlinks. I can see how much you've invested into paid ads. And I can see how Google responded to what you did over time. The cool part there is I basically have a roadmap of everything you've done in the past and why you have the rankings that you have. So I can help, you know, potentially one of your competitors come in and, and take that for themselves, which I of course would not do.
uh, <laughs> but we can we can see the the you know all the keywords that you guys rank for i can tell where your website traffic is coming from and we can see specifically which page is ranking so if you have a if we have a client that wants to rank for uh you know what is it here wire fraud in real estate let's say they want to put out a piece of information i can click that keyword and i can see all the competitors that are ranking for that keyword and then i can click on their website and we can see the article that's ranking number one right now and so guys you guys can see how we can break this down and we can look at okay why is google ranking this article number one and now this could be applied to anything right it, what does title insurance cost whatever you want to rank for in your area find the pages and the competitors that are already ranking for that and and just do what they're trying to do a little bit better write a better article give them more information right that's what you're aiming to do and so we can reverse engineer this and figure out hey google loves this content we need to produce something like this and we have actual tangible metrics that are attached to that such as if we rank for this we can expect you know the volume here of the number of people that are searching for that in that specific area and we know how much traffic it's creating for them so i don't want to geek out too much here drew but the point no, that i can. want to get across here guys is that this data is easy to obtain it's readily available and in just a few minutes we can figure out what people are typing in in your areas which competitors are ranking for them why and where the gaps are so we build that gap analysis so to speak of hey if you target these keywords in this way you'll move into those and start taking those leads and clients for yourself. Yeah, I would highly recommend that everyone take advantage of uh, my, we haven't announced it yet that you, are we still offering the, the recon report to attendees of this webinar? Yeah, yeah, since some we can do, um, <laughs> we offer those for free uh, a lot to these kinds of things. Um, I'll show the, I'll show the market yeah. recon report yeah. here if you want me to and uh, I just yeah, can go down that path. We recommend that everyone take advantage of the tool that Dave just showed you because it's much more in depth. Uh, you could also simply search for the keywords and the, the terms that you would want to be uh, found. Your website would be shown for your ideal customer typing in those phrases. You can just do a simple Google search and see what pops up in that in those search engine results too. It's not as detailed as what Dave showed you, but that is uh, probably the first baby step in seeing what other blogs and web pages are out there. And whether it's the Google results or the uh, more precise tool that Dave just showed you, everything's out there and there is an algorithm to it, whether it's Google or Bing or uh, LinkedIn's algorithm, Facebook's algorithm, there are, is a set of criteria that is proprietary to those platforms that um, you know they put out the content that they feel is most helpful to their audience and uh, how many different factors do we have Dave for uh, at least for Google for, Man, for there's websites. a lot there's a lot I'll, I'll pull those up I've got a, a cool little graph I can show uh, but segueing in from that last one guys if, if you get anything out of that just know that the biggest mistake that I see from title companies specifically is when they're attempting to create their marketing budget they're guessing now they're educated guesses based on what's worked in the past, but where I hear people trying, how are we gonna spend our ad dollars? How are we gonna reach our clients? It, it's usually, well, we should have a website, we should be blogging, uh, and we should be on social media. We should also be putting on events. So let's do all those things, right? But there's a step that happens before that, which is exactly what we just went through, of actually building a plan. I find that people are targeting keywords that don't have any traffic or they're creating a lot of blog posts, but there's no targeted keywords behind them. So before you write a new website page, before you add a new service page, before you rewrite your homepage for your new website, before you decide what articles you're going to write, you should know what keyword am I targeting with this? What is the volume of people searching that keyword in my area? And how do I optimize this post? And if you do what we just went through, finding that keyword, doing that research, and then writing an article that's better than the ones that are already ranking, that is an actual strategy that's going to capture traffic online and start bringing in you know, leads to your site that want to, to read that information. And then you can make a segue at the very end. Hey, if you need more help with this, or if this article opened up more questions, just give us a call and we'll put you on the phone with an agent, right? And that's how our clients are closing customers out of informational blog posts 
by giving them the answer they were looking for and then inviting them to reach out to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation or, or to get some you know some information about the deal that they have uh, and then google ranks that and they'll pull in a few hundred per article every month and they inevitably close a good percentage of those people as new leads um, so moving on from there uh, you know, the, the end goal is to rank. The end goal is so that when someone in your local area goes online and types in title company near me, how do you show up first? And so I got to get a little bit nerdy here, but I'm going to show you guys specifically what Google is looking for, because I think there's a huge black hole here of people that don't really understand what Google is looking at when they decide who to rank. So I'm going to give you that information here. And this is purely an organic rank and not a paid to be at the top of the page. Correct. Um, can you see the screen here? Yeah, we got the, you know, if I'll anyone sees the EEAT, it's expertise. Uh, yeah, experience, expertise, authority, authorityness, and trustworthiness. Nice. Because if I, I'm in Louisville, Kentucky here, and if I type in title company near me, usually there would be some ads up top here. In most cities, there are ads up top. In this case, I've looked at Louisville, Kentucky, where I live. I know there's a good amount of traffic. No one here is running ads, which I see that in a lot of markets. So what does that mean? Ads are on sale. <laughs> you can come in here and snatch up leads for as little as a dollar to two dollars a click when there's no competitors in place. And we've done that in a lot of you know small to medium sized cities. There's been no competition. A couple of our clients are the only ones getting ads. So they have full coverage over all of those people to, to capture. Now, about 20 percent of searchers will click on an ad. So it's not gangbusters, but it's definitely there and it can be profitable and it's worth a test. So then we get the organic results. And you see this big map section? It means Google sees this search as a local search. So they show the maps near the top. The three that you see here, this is called the map pack. Getting into the map pack is a very big priority for most small businesses because they get about 40% of all the leads in the city for people that are typing in title company near me in Louisville, Kentucky. These three people that are here, Louisville Title Agency, Signature Title, and Cherokee, get the lion's share of the leads in this city, about 40% just from the map listings. And then we get about another 30 to 40% of people that scroll down here to the organic listings, a separate place where you guys can rank, okay? And where, you know, again, we see about 30 to 40% of leads clicking on these listings. Now, less than 2% of people will actually go past page one. So if you're not in the first 10, you're virtually invisible. So what you can do if you want to play along, go into your city, type in title company near me or type in a service that you offer and see where you rank, see what competitors are there. And that that is the start of this journey of figuring out how you can move into the lead flow that they're currently getting and take them for yourselves, because that's the end goal here. OK, so how do you get there? How do you get into the maps? How do you raise now, that's a really complicated Google algorithm that goes behind it, but I'm going to break it down probably in a way that you guys haven't heard before. This is our best understanding of what factors Google takes into account to figure out which title companies they're going to show at the top of a specific city. Now, I'm not going to touch on all the little small ones. I want to hit the big ones for you. Your GBP, that is your Google business profile. That is this thing right here that you have where when people go to the maps, and they can see this, they click on your profile here, this thing that has your photos and your name and your reviews and your website and all your information, this is called your Google business profile. Ideally, you wanna have one of these in every single city that you service. You see how it's, it's based on proximity. I'm located, I don't know, somewhere in this area down here. Now, it's only gonna show people within a 10 mile radius of me. You see that circle is about right here. Notice how no one is showing up over here in West Louisville for me because they're outside that 10 mile radius. So when you're looking at the areas that you wanna create a Google business profile for, you really wanna have one about every 10 to 15 miles away from each other, right? So that you cover your different cities. If you service multiple cities, this is a big one, you need a different Google business profile for every city that you service. If you want to rank in those areas. Now that proximity is based on the address that you put into the profile. So there's another one. If you have your address and let's say that it's in a county over, but you're targeting this city, if that city that you're targeting is 10 miles or more away from where your address is on the profile, very unlikely to rank. So I'll reiterate that. You wanna have a Google business profile in every city that you service with a, with a business address that's within that area. Drew, did I explain that okay? Well, currently, I guess this, for 
if we service an entire state, how do you go about that? I mean, it's not a physical location. So are we getting into the service area profiles or, or what, how do we, how yeah, do we go so about you can, that? You can rank organically in those lists down below where it shows all the websites. You can rank in there statewide. But if you want to show up in the maps section, it really is based on proximity. Okay. So if you have a statewide service, the answer is to get as many Google business profiles and locations in the big cities as possible. For example, we just worked with a client out of Colorado and they service all of Colorado, but they only had one business profile located in Mesa. All right. What's the biggest city in, in Colorado? Right? It's Phoenix by far. So they're, they wanted to target leads from Phoenix, but all of their leads were coming from Mesa. They ranked number one in Mesa and they were invisible throughout the rest of the state. So what did we do? We went in and we said, hey, let's find a way to get some other addresses for the business. So they, they did some stuff. They went, they did some co-working spaces. You know, those like the Regis's where they have a co-working space where you can like rent an office for a day or have a virtual mailbox. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of them did, they did that in a few different cities. So they got a temporary office, they validated it with Google, and then they went on. In other cases, they partnered with a couple of local businesses there, say, hey, can we use this address? We'll pay you. In other cases, they bought a little broom closet in a, in like a, a business, um, like a business suite park, basically. They got a really small little office that they pay three to $400 a month for. And that is so worth it just to have an address there because spending four hundred dollars for an office in a city that you don't have access yet to is totally worth it because that that four hundred dollars will go farther for that address than it would be if you invested it into ads or seo or your website just because of proximity so what happened we got a google business profile in like five of the biggest cities in arizona and quadrupled their website traffic in like a matter of four to six months just by opening up multiple Google business profiles in all the cities that they service and optimizing them, getting reviews to them. That's how you unlock different geographical areas that you're not currently hitting. And so if you guys have Google business profiles out there right now, and you're only getting business from one specific city, assuming you serve bigger areas, that's why. So that's the number one actionable thing that you can do. Figure out a way to get verified Google business profiles in all the areas that you service. Uh, that is about 30% of the ranking algorithm right there. Uh, the next 26% is EEAT. Now you see I've got this up here, experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. This is probably the most important thing we'll talk about today. Drew, you and I touched on content quality earlier mm -hmm. and how we see Google moving away from the old ranking factors and moving more into who has better content for my searcher. Google bases their judgment of content based on EEAT, experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. It's your job on your website and in your content to make sure that you're exhibiting those four things. And I'll give you a very good way to do that um, here in a minute with some author pages and bios. I'll show you how to capture EEAT, but that's about 26% of the ranking algorithm there is just proving to Google that you're an authority figure. Hey, I've been in the title industry for 20 years. We've serviced thousands of deals. We have great reviews. We have you know, industry professionals that have a combined 100 years of experience. That right there, if that's on your website, Google will read that and will assign you authority and trustworthiness. That's gonna elevate the rest of the content that you provide. So it doesn't matter how good your content is, if your website does not exhibit and prove to Google to send what we call signals to Google that you have experience, that you are an expert, that you have authority in the industry and that you're trustworthy via reviews, your content won't rank. So I want to touch on that. That right there alone is 26% of the algorithm. Then past that is reviews. How does Google know you're trustworthy? They look at your Google reviews. They look at the network reviews like Facebook, Yelp. So you want to collect reviews all across the internet to send those signals to Google that we're a good service and we provide good work. Now, we'll stop there. That right there is, again, I said earlier, I'm terrible at math, right? It's about 60% of the Google algorithm. If you do those things, you will beat 80 to 90% of the people that are in your area. Past that, it's backlinks. I don't want to get too much into backlinks. That's just where uh, uh, you, you put out such great content that another website linked back to yours. There's some strategies for doing that that we can talk about a little bit later, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole too much. One quick and suggestion. It, uh, go ahead. Uh, we get uh, links if, if you sponsor an LTA event and you have your logo that links back to your website, 
that's a that's a backlink and you're, you're not going to go out and uh, get started with that in a significant way but it does help um, would you mind Dave going back to a couple uh, of, the, of the fields with the Google business profile I think some of the new things to me at least when we got started with all this back in July was you can add your own photos and since Google is able to, to see that you're making regular updates Mm -hmm. Google favors that uh, yes, the, do. the product pages, I guess, for uh, uh, another company, they have, they have some real estate on that Google business profile to where you can add your your blogs. And I guess as title professionals, our product is the knowledge and expertise. So if you're going to write a blog and you're going to post it on your site, put that blog on the, the profile. business profile right mm -hmm. yeah, you can totally do that um one quick win too before i move into gbp uh, on the backlink thing uh you know guys like uh all those directory websites um what are they drew like yelp is one um i'm blanking here there's, uh, there's a our, ton of them there's a ton of them I got our address set up set back up in yellow pages and yellow pages called yeah, exactly days. yellow Great. pages is one but there's, there's, there's hundreds of directory websites, we call those citations. And there are citation building services where you don't have to go, because how painful would it be to go out to a hundred different websites and you know create a new profile and upload your information? You can pay a service for that. And they're not very expensive. It's like one to 300 bucks to have a citation blast done. Uh, Yext is a good provider, Y-E-X-T. I wanna say Bright Local has them as well. There's other SEO companies like Hoth that would do it. We do it as part of month one of any SEO campaign that we take on. Uh, we get their their website, uh, their best phone number, and their address, and we go blast out citations all over the place. And we go create those profiles on a hundred of those big websites. And what happens is that profile has a link to our website, which then gives us a backlink to the website. So that's one really easy way. If you guys write that down, citations, go out and fill out your your citation lists. Hire a simple service to go out and blast those out for you. You'll immediately achieve 100 plus really high quality backlinks sending signals to Google that you're an authority and that you're trustworthy. On the Google business side of what Drew just talked about, you wanna go through and fill this out very intently. A couple things I wanna point out, things you can do to make that profile rank right now. These are really good uh, actionable steps for you. Add photos. You guys see that this, this signature title here only has two photos. This is your opportunity to get me interested in your team. Show me your building. Show me the place that I'm gonna go inside. Have a picture of the receptionist waving at me so I know what to expect when I go in the office. Make it feel homey like, like you guys are friends. And so that way, when I see these photos of your team or your building, I kind of already know what to expect. You're building no like and trust with me, okay? And you wanna upload about five new photos a month to send the signal to Google that you're active. So cue those up and have your marketing team go in and add new, uh, it's important that they're unique photos. Don't upload stock photography here, upload good, real photography of your team. Um, if your clients will allow it, you know those pictures we all take in front of the closing table, people holding their keys. Yeah, well, you can do that and put those in here as well. Um, but fill everything out, guys. Have your website on there. Have your phone number. Um, put in your social media links or your website. They now offer you the ability to put in services. You see there was Louisville Title Agency here was using it. They have a list of their services. So you can actually go in here and list out the different services that you provide, which is gonna help Google put your profile in front of people that are looking for those things. Um, you can do blog posts. You can put up, we do little short form blog posts for our SEO clients that we upload to their Google business profile so that you can have a little 300 word offer of the week. Uh, we do two or three of those posts a week just to keep them rolling. And there's tool, software tools out there that your marketing person or teams can use to automate and schedule those so that they're not having to log in every other day and post. You can write 20 posts in advance and then schedule them on a release. And in some cases, we'll even have them just cycle out so that you'll have six posts and then they reset and they recycle. So there's always fresh content for people that are searching online. Um, and if you do those things, you're going to be well on your way here. Last piece is reviews, guys. If you can incentivize reviews as much as you can do so. Reviews are one of the biggest ranking factors for a GBP. So every single customer that comes in and sits at your tables needs to have, you know, you guys are working to build relationships with them. Ask them if they would do you a favor and go on and leave a five-star review. That will help more than you can imagine with your local rankings. Is it really that simple, Dave, how to ask for it? Do you ever talk with people that feel a bit anxious or uncomfortable asking for the review? 
Yeah. Um, yes. And, and people, a lot of people want to send it out after the fact, but I wholeheartedly believe that an individual is unmotivated to leave a review for a business. They don't really care about your company. Who they care about is Sandra, the person that they worked with who made their experience great. So if Sandra comes in and asks, hey, if I did a good job for you, would you do me a favor and go leave a review on our profile mentioning that I did good work for you? They're way more likely to go out there and say, hey, Sandra was perfect. She made my closing a breeze. She was great to work with, blah, 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 right? You guys also have a ton of realtor and lender relationships that your team has, have been actively servicing. I guarantee if you had those account reps or who, you know, the, the officers that are working with those individual people, have them ask, hey, guys, we're, we're trying to bolster up our reviews. I've worked with you for four years. If I've done a good job, would you mind going and leaving a little review for me? And I found that nine times out of 10, those clients are like, yes, absolutely, because it comes from their contact at the company rather than just the, the faceless company itself. OK, so that's what I'd recommend there. We've even had people do, um, you know, like internal competitions where whichever rep got the most reviews, they get like a gift card or like a, a dinner certificate or something. Or if you get five, then you unlock this Amazon gift card, whatever. You can do little stuff to incentivize your team to get reviews. Um, and that works pretty well as well. I will say, as far as all the Google ranking stuff, content is going to take over. That's going to be 2024. And we're seeing it right now quality of content matters more than almost anything else. So if you're only gonna focus on a couple things, get that Google business profile fully optimized and get the content on your website to be actually helpful. And that's kind of what I think we can move into next year, Drew. Um, I don't wanna to touch on some of this too much. A uh, quick question, you uh, can you use a PO box as uh, nope. Google business? No, sir, Google's cracking down on them. Google's also starting to crack down on shared office spaces too, but we found that if you go with Regis or one of those big ones, Google will almost block you every time. But there are a ton of little local co-working spaces where you can rent an office or you can have a, a mail, like a virtual mailbox. Those tend to work pretty well still. Now you are gonna have to go in and verify it. You know, Google has their new verification thing where you have to film it on a phone and say, this is the street, this is my building. You have to walk inside to show them where you work. But once it's verified, you can keep that address active, but you don't have to rent the office every day, right? And that way you'll have a valid address in that area that doesn't cost you maybe 60, 80 bucks a month to keep that virtual mailbox running. Those work pretty well, but it has to be a physical location. You can't be on the video and walk into uh, the, you know, the post office and be like, yep, that PO box right there is where I operate my business. <laughs> they, they won't let that fly. Um, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go too long here, Drew. We're uh, good. Yeah, I want to keep keep, uh, keep the time in mind. Um, as far do, do we want to? Well, there was a note here about blogging regularly. We, we touched on in, in the prep for this. Uh, just some basic tools to get going with blogging and and how to just take those first steps. I mean, frankly, I'm not a super great writer. I'm trying to get my chops up with that. But you know, there are some some editing tools that I, I use uh, There's a program called Grammarly. You can use mm -hmm. ChatGPT, the free version. But uh, D Dave, what was the tool you told me about? That, that uh, you used? Are you talking about Surfer SEO? Yes. Thank you. Ah, so yeah, and, and on AI, I mean, I use AI for content writing all the time. But the point is that it, it's human, dr uh, human driven. I'm telling it what content I want it to produce and, and what the specific selling points of the article is and what the keyword focus is and what the tone of voice needs to be in the reading level. And if you are really dialing it in, you can use GPT as a helping tool, but do not just use vanilla GPT and say, write me an article on blah and hit enter and copy and paste. Um, then I recommend however you write your content, if it's AI or handwritten, run it through Surfer SEO. Surfer SEO is a really neat tool. You give it what keyword you wanna rank for, and it will analyze your content and give you helpful insights along the way. Hey, you need to add a keyword here. Hey, you need to optimize this headline. Here's a suggestion. Uh, so we use Surfer SEO when we write content and it's super helpful. It just gives you a bunch of little nuances about how that content can rank in that area for that target. And that just helps you not be shooting in the dark. Um, but Drew, I have a lot of stuff I could run through very quickly in these last you know, 10 minutes or so before we open up for questions of actual, actionable steps that, that our viewers here can take. Um, yeah to rank on Google. Are you cool with me rolling through those? Yeah, I do you think. So guys, we I'm gonna roll through these pretty quickly. Um, this would be a good time to take some notes. I'm gonna drop a lot of, lot of value right here. Uh, we already talked about how to see which keywords you can, you can target right now. 
So you want to look at the holes that the content has and consider how you could do a better job of ranking for those keywords. So you're going to be breaking down your competitors uh, and figuring out what they're doing uh, that has made them so successful. Look at the length of their pages. That's really important. Um, your competitors that are ranking on page one are doing so for a very specific reason. You want to be able to emulate what they're doing. So if they're writing a 2,000 word article and they rank in number one, and then you look at number two, and they have a 1,500 word article, and they're in number two, you're not gonna rank with a 600 word article. So you need to be looking at those cues. That's why it's really important to have targets in place. What are we trying to rank for? Who ranks now? What do I need to write to beat them? That needs to be at the forefront of your all's thought when you're creating new content, okay? Um, let's see here. I won't touch too much on that. Next one, you wanna have, this is a website piece. You need to have one page for every single service that you offer. Too often, I see a services page that lists 10 services on it. If you have that, one of the most actionable things I can tell you to do today is leave that service page the way it is so that it lists everything that you do, but then add a unique page for each one of those. And then under the description, have a read more where people can click and go to a page that's just about that one thing because your service page can't rank for 10 different keywords. So if you have 10 different services, Google doesn't know which one you're prioritizing. But if you have a list of services that link out to a unique page for each one, bang it, that's perfect. So you wanna have one for uh, every service that you offer, probably at a thousand words minimum for each one of those pages, okay? Then you wanna have one page for every client type that you service. Um, I'm gonna pull up very quickly here. Pull up plaster title. This is a this good is example. This is the website you won, uh, won the Webby for, right? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this website, we built it for Plaster Title Company out of California. Um, they're one of the bigger title companies there on the West Coast. We won a, a Webby Award with Alta for this approach. Uh, the reason being was because everyone speaks a different language about title. Whether you're talking to a homeowner, a lender, a realtor, uh, whatever that is, they have different languages that they speak, right? They don't all understand the same things about title. They don't understand all the lingo. So you probably, when you're selling to these people, you tailor the way that you talk to that specific person that you're talking to, right? That's how we create an emotional connection with them and get them uh, to trust us, right? So we created a website that has four different buttons right off the bat. Hey, are you a real estate agent? Are you a lender? Are you a homeowner? Are you a future customer? And when a user clicks on that, it takes them to the homeowner page and we're giving them specific information that's, uh, that's targeting what homeowners care about, what they need to know, what's important for them, all the language is tailored to them. So I highly recommend at least having a different page for who we serve, okay? Each individual different client type that you have, tell them how you're gonna transform their world. Tell them the problems that they commonly face and how you solve them. And so again, one page for every service, one page for every client type, the last one is one page for every city. Told you guys that you wanna have a Google business profile in every city that you service. You also wanna have one page for every city that you service as well. So it'd be title services, Louisville. Title services, Mount Washington. Title services in New York. Again, at least a thousand words of content that are all unique. You can't reuse the same content on multiple pages. But that's gonna send all of that together that I just mentioned gives Google the signal. Okay, I know what they offer. They have a page for each one. I know who they offer it to because they have a dedicated page for each one. And I know where they offer it because they have a dedicated page for each city. So now Google is way more likely to send a realtor in Louisville, Kentucky that's looking for title services to a page that explains how we assist realtors in Louisville, Kentucky with title services, right? So when you're looking at planning out your next website build, do those things. One page for every city, one page for every service, one page for every client type that you serve, and you will be leagues ahead of your competitors in terms of ranking for those keywords, okay? Uh, let's see here. Mm, I don't wanna to touch too much on that. We talked about EEAT. The one thing I wanna to touch on there is if you guys have ever heard of your money and your life, I wanna to touch on that for a second. Google scrutinizes websites, but they scrutinize websites even more that will affect the searcher's money or their life. So I'm talking financial institutions, insurance companies, therapists, hospitals, all of those have the ability to impact your well-being in terms of finances or um, you know, your, your life, right? So you guys have to prove that you are reputable. 
I've said we'd touch on that before. Number one way to do that, guys, take your biggest people at the company, like your um, your owners or your executive teams, the, the people that have decades of experience in title. We know behind every big title company, there's a guy that's been in the industry forever that has an unlimited amount of knowledge, right? Build an author page for him on your website, like a staff page, a bio, have his picture, brag on him big time. He started out in 1967. He oversaw these things. He's been on the Alta board. He started this company then. he's. You see the point? Brag about him on your website and then link him as the author to the blog posts that you're writing. And Google will index that and they will see, oh, wow, this blog post or this website was written by a guy that's been in the industry for 50 years. What is more authoritative and trustworthy than that? So I can tell you build author pages complete with bios, brag on the people at your company that are gonna be putting out your writing. Google will see that and push you up the rankings because that person is highly authoritative. Uh, we already talked about one, one GBP for every area that you service. We talked about focusing on reviews. Uh, we talked about blogging regularly, but having a target in mind. What keyword is this blog going after? Who are the competitors that are ranking there already? How can I build a better article than my competitor did? last week so that I can move into that spot and take that traffic for myself. We talked about backlinks. I gave you guys the idea to go out and build your citations using a service like Yext. Super easy, couple hundred bucks, and you will have your profile out there across the web. That sends a bunch of signals to Google for various reasons. Uh, you can do press releases and have them syndicated. That's one of our big strategies for our SEO clients. We're doing a couple press releases every month and, uh, and having them um, blasted out there onto the internet. Uh, so that works really well. We send them out to a bunch of local news agencies who post those press releases. You can also do guest posts. Guys, hit up your state's land title association and offer to write them an informative blog about something that their readers would care about. How to do something in the title industry, whatever it might be. Ask them, hey, if I wrote an article, would you post it on the land title association website with a link back to me? Yep. So boom, then you have your, your author out there who's created a nice blog post on Alta's website and it links back to you. Google sees that as a referral to you from the Land Title Association, which is highly reputable. So you get that reputation forwarded to yourself as well. Um, I will say be careful with third-party backlink services. I got a lot of title companies getting burned by that right now. You get what you pay for. There's a lot of overseas folks that are selling backlink packages quickest way to get your site blasted by Google into oblivion. So be careful with doing that. Uh, lastly, I'll say um, optimize your pages technically. Guys, you can run an SEO audit. There's 101 websites out there that you can run your URL through a, an SEO audit, and it will give you just a laundry list of technical problems that look super geeky that you probably won't understand. Just run that SEO audit and hand it off to your web development team and say, hey guys, how much of this could we fix in five to 10 hours of labor and let them hit the lowest hanging fruit to optimize your website. That's all the boring stuff in the back end, your title tags, your meta tags, your schema, all that stuff that website developers deal with. They can optimize those things in your site uh, to just make Google give you a higher quality score. Google wants to send their people to well-built websites and there's tools that will tell us exactly what you need to change. So you don't have to shoot in the dark with that. Um, let's see. A quick question: Does a yeah, shoot. a link from an, an agent's site to us provide any value to the the agent, or how does how does that link dynamic? What was, what was that? Sorry. So it do, does um what would be the dynamic of link us linking to an agent site or an agent site linking to us? Uh, how does yeah, that I mean, um, make everything any, go of, any of those work. The, the site that's being linked to gets the majority of the of the juice there. And the higher the the higher the authority of that website is, the better. Look at it like this. Um, pretend I'm Google, right? And I have a I have a bunch of best friends out there: CNN, Fox, news websites, uh, large sites that have been around for a long time that I know I can trust, right? But I, you come in and your uh, security title, brand new. I have no idea who you are. So if you get a bunch of backlinks from a bunch of people that I don't know, it's like people I don't know recommending you. But if you get a backlink from a really reputable website that's been around for a long time and has good SEO standing, then I look at that as like one of my best friends saying, hey, Drew's the man. So that backlink goes way farther when it's someone that Google trusts more. Did I explain that okay? So a backlink from CNN is worth a thousand backlinks from 
much lower obscure local websites. So I'll say that the, the value of the backlink is based on the quality of the site that's being sent. That's why land title associations work really well for title companies because they're very reputable. They have a long standing history and Google trusts them as a statewide organization for compliance. So if they link back to you, Google says, hmm, this must be a decent title company. Their, their state land title association recommends them. Okay. Makes sense. Well, looks like we got about five minutes here. Um, did you want to try to do a, a sample uh, search of somebody's site yep. or did we want to look at security title market? We can. Are, is there anybody in here that, that would be okay with me tearing their site apart on, on a live call? <laughs> I'll be very nice and I'll give you actionable steps, but is there anybody in here that wants some some free suggestions? Uh, I can I can take you through the, the chat or the question box if, if someone wants to volunteer their site. And if not, I totally understand. Um, I can pull up kind of we'll look at the uh, I can pull up the market recon report that we did for uh, security title and show you kind of what what that looks like when we when we put that together. Um, or I can break down a uh, a live. Sure. Well, uh, doesn't look like we have anyone. No one brave no. enough. All right. All right. Okay. I understand. Just, I understand. So yeah, uh, we, we did this with with Dave back in July or. August or September or something. I guess I'll look at the timestamp on the Google also Doc. Also, a couple of a couple of well-built sites. Uh, this was Title Support Services, one that we just did. And the point that I'll make here again: look, one page for every different type that they service. So if you scroll down on the home page, you see you can view all the services. Uh, but we also talk specifically about the different folks that they service. So attorneys can click and see exactly how we service them. Title agents can click and see exactly what services they can get from this company. Um, again, and I'll tell you this. I know it's a big budget sometimes to build out a page for every city, a page for every service. So what this what this customer decided to do with us was list out these services for now. And then as part of their ongoing campaign, we're going to build a page for each one of these. So we'll build a new page for title search and examination. We'll build a full page for settlement production. We'll build a full page for foreclosures. And we'll list one page every month so that Google sees that we're continually adding services and we'll end up with a website that has a page for each of our core services. But you don't have to start there, guys. Um, you know, another one, I'll show a, a well-built limo site um, that we did a, a while back. I think that the reason I'm showing this, it's not in, it's not a law firm or a title company, uh, but it's built extremely well from the, from the standpoint of having the locations that you service listed on every service page. If we click into one of the locations, you see that they have a list of all the services with a link to view each service page. This creates a spider web that no matter where Google starts, they find your services, your areas, and who you serve. So I wanted to showcase that. Because it'll as still associate as, title insurance and location together. Yeah. That, that's how that works. Yeah, every, every location page that you have, title services in New York, you wanna have a link to all the service pages that you offer there. And by creating that matrix, that really helps Google see uh, okay, they offer these services in these areas for these people. That's why I keep reiterating that. That's the number one thing that you can do for your site structure. Uh, this what I have up here was the the MRR you were talking about, Drew. Yeah. Um, so guys, what this looks like, um, and I'll offer this for free to anybody that's on this call that wants one. It is an insane amount of information, and it's like drinking from a fire hose. Uh, but it is the end all be all report that you could ever hope to have if you plan to want to rank online or produce content. This is something, in my opinion, that you have to have before you do any kind of marketing. It takes me and my team about five to six hours to put it together. Um, so you have to be patient with me, especially if a lot of people request one, but I'd be happy to put it together for you and show you what it looks like in your local market. Uh, but very quickly, you know, we're going to look at where the locations, uh, what locations you're serving, who the big competitors are, we're going to break down and look, remember that tool I pulled up earlier, we were going to look at the competitors and see, okay, they started investing in backlinks around this time, that gave them X amount of traffic, they're getting about $1,400 in traffic value a month, here's what we could budget and what we could realistically make. We start looking at the keywords that they rank for. Hey, this, the, you know, this was Westcore, for example. We're, we can see what positions they rank for, what pages they have that, that, uh, that are ranking there. Um, you get the idea there. We can really pull the curtain back and see exactly what competitors are doing and why they rank where they rank. And then your game plan is infinitely simpler because now you know exactly what you need to put in place. No more throwing money at the wall. No more, well, I guess we need this guest post this month or I guess we should build this blog. You will have an actionable set of steps that you can take to rank online. 
not only that date, but at the very bottom, you, you literally spell it out. If you want to. Yeah, after the working. keywords here. Yeah, I and mean, some again. of the keywords, like don't be intimidated by all the different columns. If you reach back out to Dave and do this, so he'll break it down. I, I was totally green to any of this when we first spoke. Uh, and some of this you know, looks like a foreign language, but you get down and into the uh, the opportunities. Mm -hmm. with the I'll keywords, go down there. And then you get and into we the to-do to list. You know, I think you and I sat on a call for two hours with the team and I walked through every little piece of this data and yeah. why it's important. And we record that call and give it to you as well. So if that's something that would be helpful, feel free to reach out. Uh, but, you know, I gave, you know, full keywords, I have a full separate export of all the keywords and the gap analysis of what you needed to target. We looked at the summary. We ran the, the citation report, which looks at, remember all those different directories I was talking about that we needed to get on? We can see which ones you're missing and if the information there is incorrect, come from Bing to Yahoo to Foursquare to BBB to MapQuest, and we can update all of those. Um, we look at a local search audit report, which takes into account everything online and breaks down exactly what's happening, how you rank, where you rank, what's happening locally. We do a local search audit that breaks down the Google business profile, tells you exactly what you need to do, more photos, more reviews, fill out the products and services section. Each office needs its own GBP. And then we make a list of recommendations. And here's exactly what you need to do in order to rank locally. And we break all those down using data. So the, if you guys get one thing out of this whole presentation, I hope it's that you don't have to shoot in the dark. People are online searching for title agents. They're out there and they're looking. Um, and that there is an, a very achievable way to figure out what those people are searching for and then a clear and concise way that you need to implement based on that uh, in order to capture those people online. And so there's a, there's a clear step-by-step -step process and that's why shooting in the dark doesn't work. That's why our campaigns work so well time and time again is because they're not, they're not based on guesswork. They're based on actual data of what actual people are typing in in the actual cities that you serve. It looks at your actual competitors and figures out what they did to achieve what they achieved and gives you steps on how to insert yourself into that current flow of traffic that already exists and start to take some of those leads for yourself. And what, just doing a, a little bit of those two big chunks of that pie uh, we doubled the website traffic on on the security title side in a couple months and, and got our traffic up uh, higher than it's been, you know, the highest in the last three or four years, I think. Yeah, man, when you, when you get the data and you implement, it is much simpler than if you're shooting in the dark and, and guessing at what we need to do. And again, that's what I see most title companies doing is some of them are doing the right things, but they don't know why. And it's because they're lacking that upfront data. They don't know what keywords they're targeting. They don't know what people in their areas are typing in. And they don't know why their competitors are ranking and they're not. Uh, and just with a few of those simple steps, you can, you can discover that. You can produce content that people want to consume, that Google wants to publish. Um, and if you're not doing those things, it's an uphill battle. You're trying to get Google to show something that people aren't looking for, and it's not optimized for that search. Whereas if you start with the data, it becomes really easy. Hey, we have 10 blog articles we need to write based on the questions people are asking in Idaho. Now let's do that, right? Let's, let's put a schedule out, let's write these blog posts, each one targeting this question that apparently 85 people are typing in every month. And that's where you start getting those wins. Wow, we increased website traffic 50, 50 people this month. Wow, that blog article ranks nationally, who knew? And then you, you build that reputation up with Google and before you know it, you rank number one in your area on Google Maps and people call it, Dave, why, my phone exploded today. Yeah, it's because you you finally, after six months of effort, made it into that map pack, that top three. And now you've unlocked the the mother load of, of title leads. Um, and it works really well. And so we've consistently put out websites that rank number one. And our clients are consistently surprised that I didn't know there was this much traffic out there. I just assumed that you know no one was looking. Uh, and so it works really well. Works really well. And I guess the something that we didn't even talk about up to this point but a lot of these are active steps that you can take uh, google alerts is something that i'd recommend everyone take advantage of if you're looking to get the the top content based on title insurance or real estate or insert topic of your choosing you set that one time and you get the top story sent to you and you create a passive 
uh, source of knowledge of what you might be able to create content on. So just just Google Google alerts, and then you can type in however many categories you want sent to your email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Google alerts are great for staying on top of competitors and things like that as well. Um, yeah, man. yeah, guys. I love well, to talk shop as well. So yeah. if anybody ever wants to sit down and kind of go over some things, I, I love to do this kind of stuff and geek out on the data. I have a lot of fun doing it. This is the, the main part of the job that I enjoy. Uh, in fact, I hand off fulfillment to our team to do because I love this upfront piece so much. It's like a puzzle to solve. I love getting in there, figuring out why people are ranking, what steps they need to take. So I'm always down to have a conversation. Yeah, the the data that you provided up front was really just invigorating is that the right word energizing something that is a positive stimuli to make me think i can do this sort of but you've done a great job i would recommend that everyone take advantage of and dave's offer for the the market recon report it's a ton of information that if anything you can just uh you know, keep it safe on on your on your computer have it safe on your end and uh It'll really give you some baby steps to, to get going with this. If it gets to a point where you want to expand it out in a more significant way, uh, there's so much stuff that's above my head that I, I don't even want to mess with, but Dave and his team are more than capable. And then uh, you know, there's going to be a, a four question survey sent out. If any of this was helpful, please let us know. If any of it uh, wasn't helpful, you know, I can take it. Just let me know. We'll, we'll make it better for next time. Dave, do you have any any final words? No, I think uh, I think I threw a lot at everybody, so I won't throw any more. I think that was a great, uh, that was a good foundation. If you can do 50% of the things that we talked about today, guys, I'm telling you, you'll beat most of your local competitors. I know that we're all here, and every time we go to a conference, there's somebody that gets up on stage and talks about the importance of reaching millennials, right? It's been like that for a decade. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I won't I won't beat the horse to death anymore. So if you focus on getting your content right on your website, getting the pages in place, getting reviews, putting up a GBP in your different cities, you all are off to the races. You'll be well ahead of everyone else. I'd say most everyone else in the area, unless they're actively investing, which most aren't. Uh, so you can kind of get ahead of this, uh, especially as Google continues to change. Keep producing good content. Create those author pages for your for your highest uh, you know folks in your business and you'll be exhibiting authority, Google will see that and will put your content in front of more people and you will close more deals, you will create more relationships, you'll get more website traffic uh, and it'll affect your bottom line. So I hope this was useful for you guys and I appreciate the opportunity to come and chat with you. Thanks for hanging out. Sweet. Uh, Dave, we'll talk about uh, when you're smoking your next try tip soon enough. Uh, hey man. You know, they, they say as men age, they either What's the saying? They either get really into smoking meat or they become giant history buffs for World War II. Yeah. I did both. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm, I'm, yeah, we'll have to talk about the, the new Turning Point documentary on Netflix about the Cold War and all that stuff. Yep. Talk. Yeah. Talk. Trust me, I'll, I'll be there. No, uh, yeah, uh, take up Dave on his offer. Uh, the biggest thing that I would stress to you is that you're all subject matter experts. You're running businesses, you're operating businesses. You have these conversations on a daily basis, and those conversations are the foundation for the content that can be uh, multiplied and, and shouted out through your digital platforms that you already have. So you guys got this. Take advantage of it, and uh, we'll move forward and have a more productive 2024. That's right. Go implement. See you guys. Go team.